I'm Robson Green. Actor and extreme fisherman. I've spent the last five years travelling the globe, catching fish most anglers only dream of. From South America... Oh, my Lord! ...to the South Pacific. That is unbelievable! And from teeming rivers... Look at this fish! ...to raging seas. Why not? Why not? I've hunted fish with some of the yeah. best in the world. Then I decided to challenge them. Oh, it's a monster! Six to you, seven to me! <laughs> now I'm turning up the heat. Holy And taking oh. my extreme fishing challenge to the next level. Watch ya! Nice wine! Let battle commence. From the wildest places on the planet... Whoa. ...to the coldest. Every week, it's a different location. Are you telling me I'm going to be robbed by a dolphin? With the same extreme challenge. Why are you laughing? That is the cruel. Five rounds of competitive fishing against some of the best anglers that nation has to offer. I can't be beaten by a pommy actor. To win, I'll need to catch the most... Oh, my Lord! ...the biggest... Oh, whoa! ...and the best. What a beauty. This is my extreme fishing challenge. <laughs> this week, the nation I'm taking on over five extreme fishing challenges is Mozambique in southern Africa. Mozambique, here I come. Mozambique is one of Africa's lesser-known countries, but with two and a half thousand kilometers of dramatic coastline and the mighty Zambezi River flowing straight through the middle, this could be the perfect hunting ground for my next fishing challenge. My starting point is the vibrant coastal town of Villanculos. Kind of reminds me of Northumberland Street back in Newcastle. I've been told I'll find my first opponent here, a Mozambican fishing legend. I'm looking for the finest fisherman in Mozambique. It goes by the name of Duat Ratu. Never heard about him. Will you tell him, Robson Green, from Extreme Fishing with Robson Green is asking after him. Dwight, I presume. Robson. How are you doing, Robson? Nice to see you, man. Dwight Rato. Originally from Portugal, he's been here since he was six. And by all accounts, he's the country's top sports fisherman with an international reputation for catching monster game fish. How do you feel about being beaten on your home turf? No chance. Not going to happen. You got a lot of guts coming in here in my home water, sir. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. So you reckon you can beat me, do you? We shall see. We will see. <laughs> and you will see. <laughs> I'd book your flight out of here, Bonnie lad. <laughs> Best of luck. Let's do it. You're going to need it. <laughs> Dwight fishes in the tropical waters of the Bazaruto Archipelago. It's one of the largest marine reserves in the Indian Ocean and home to an extraordinary diversity of fish species. Now it's about this for a competition. It's the angler with the most different species of fish is the winner. Sounds all right. Made the best angler win. <laughs> You're looking at him. <laughs> so round one is a fishing free-for-all here in the Indian Ocean, where victory is all about variety. We could bang into anything from Wahoo, King Mackerel, Giant Trevelli, Yellowfin, oh, and sharks. Battle commence. Yeah. We have got a pack attack. <laughs> no sooner had we put the lures in the water than wallop, 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 wallop. Unbelievable. 
Liverpool put... In a matter of seconds, we've hit a huge school of feeding yellowfin tuna. And all six of our lines are hooked up. Bit of a ballet going on here. It's called a tuna waltz. <laughs> it's called a tuna waltz. I love it. Oh, a beautiful 12, 15 pound tunus albacorus. One of the fastest fish around here. What a beauty. Nice yellow thing. I tell you what, it's angling mayhem. Robson? Yes, sir. Got another yellow thing here? There's too many for us to keep and eat. So most are going back in. Robson? Yes, sir. Why are you taking so long? In all the years I've been on this angling adventure, I don't think we've ever had a pack attack quite like that. Good job. How's about that? Here's the fella that was causing all the angling excitement. Very fine example of a yellowfin tuna there. Not so long ago, the yellowfin were non-existent in these waters. But about four years ago, they came back in their thousands. I was talking to Dwight about it. He thinks it's because of the piracy of the East Coast. Commercial vessels are too scared to come in and catch the fish. So we could pull yellowfin out of the sea all day, but as this competition is all about diversity of species, we're heading off in search of others. Oh. We've got another pack attack, but it ain't yellowfin. It is the Dorado. They are some of the most spectacular fighting fish on the planet. And it's been a while since I caught one. And I'd better land this one because Dwart's in as well. She's off. It was a catch. That was a catch. That was definitely a catch. He had his hand on the leader. Yep, I'll give him that. So I need to land mine to pull level. Oh, yes. They still leap so close to the boat. Why not one? Oh, that's a good size Dorado. Okay. That there is an extreme fish. It's been a long while since I caught one. The dolphin fish, the mahi mahi, the Dorado. And Dorado means golden. And just check out the golden, glistening coloration on that fish. And that is one of my favorite fish on the planet. Get in. Get in. With the scores tied at two species each, one more could win it. But with such a variety here, you just never know what's going to bite on your bait. Either this is a record-breaking yellowfin, or something else has taken it. This is no tuna. Dwart, take a wild guess and tell me what's on the end here. That's probably a shark took it, huh? Oh, dear. We're going to be here a while. The problem is that my rod is set for a fish weighing up to about 40 pounds, not a shark, which could be in excess of 400. Right, Duart, I'm in a bit of a catch-22 situation here. We are an incredibly light tackle, and it's probably going to take all day, if not two days, to bring this fish in. You know, if it's a shark, you know, it'll sit here for hours and eventually something will just give in, huh? I think it'll probably be me. <laughs> oh, he's away. I don't want to give up because this would be a winning fish, but the odds are definitely stacked in the shark's favor. I've been fighting this fish now for 20 minutes. I'm going to give it another 10. And if we can't get it anywhere near the boat, we're just going to have to let it go. You need a hand there, Robson. With one final make or break effort, Duart steps in to help me haul it up. He's going under the boat. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Oh, he's gone. Oh, bugger. Oh, bugger. All that work, all that reeling, all that effort for that. That's what happens, Dwart, when you try and catch a living dinosaur on light tackle. Why did you give me that rod to catch a shark? That was a typical nasty Mozambique trick. Nasty, but effective. With two species each, our time is up. What can I say? It's a draw. 
Happy with a draw. A draw against a legend away from home. And that's as good as a win in my book. <laughs> I came to take on Mozambique's finest, and so far I'm holding my own as the score remains nil-nil. I'm pretty chuffed with that, and Duarte has generously offered me a reward for my efforts. How's about this? My very own desert island. Ah, lovely. This is... Where are you going? Well, you're not coming with me? Duarte, I thought we were friends. I thought we had a relationship. I've been picking you up as a legend all day. Duarte. What? Oh, do what? Having drawn my first challenge, the score remains all square. But hopefully with my next challenge, that's about to change. How are you, sir? Robson Green, I presume. Yeah, Graham Pollard, I think. What's the plan for this afternoon? Well, we're going to do a bit of fly fishing, looking to catch either Big King Mackerel or some of the Trevally species. Sounds good. You know what? We might be on your turf, but fly fishing is definitely my territory. OK? Let battle commence. Let's do it. Graham Pollard. Born in Zambia, he came to Mozambique 20 years ago. Has dedicated a decade to fly fishing here, and as a skipper, has held an unbelievable seven world records. Now, Graham, I know there's a diversity of species underneath this boat, but we're going to keep it simple today. Biggest fish wins? That'll do. Yeah, that'll do. That'll do. OK, sir. OK. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, game on. So, round two. Fly fishing for King Mackerel and Trevelli in the Indian Ocean. Biggest one caught will win the day. Why is this such a good spot for GT and King Mackerel? We're quite far out to sea, and there's a spot where it comes up to 30 metres here. All of the bait fish hold on top of that, and then, of course, the King Mackerel and the predatory fish are around there having a look for them. I got you. I've been casting flies in rivers since I was seven, but saltwater fly fishing is a different game altogether. Just replicating bait fish flying through the water, trying to get away. On. There we go. Oh, he's in. I'd get that in quick, Graham, or the sharks will get it. <laughs> Coming up, we're on the leader. And we've got a black tip kingfish, one of the Trevally species. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. What you have there is one lean, mean, fish killing machine. Now, I take it it's called a black tip Trevally because of the, the, the tail, the black tip it, of the tail? It is indeed, not very prominent here, but you can see the yellow lower half and the black upper half. And it is strict catch and release for this species, so he's going back. So, Graham's taken the early lead. This is an ocean away from the fly fishing I'm used to. I don't think I'm stripping it quick enough. It could be far more aggressive. Be adventurous. Be brutal. OK, Robson, we're on the money here. Nice quick strip. Yes, sir! <laughs> the faster, the better. That was the secret. It's a good fish! It's the only way to catch them, on the fly. I've got one hell of a fight on my hands. OK, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. What? Again? They're very close to each other. We tangled. We could lose both the fish here. <laughs> you still on there, Robson? Still on. Well done. I think it's a Trevelli. Go on, don't lose him. Ah, there we go. That is a beauty. Awesome fish, Robson. Unfortunately, so is Graham's. Let's see who's the biggest, the moment of truth. <laughs> Let me turn mine around. Oh, oh neck and God, neck. They're identical twins. That is unbelievable. <laughs> it's a draw. <laughs> it's a draw. It's a draw. They're bigger than the first one you caught. That's true, that's true. true. We're on a draw. Okay. These are the brothers and the sisters. Let's catch mum and dad, eh? Let's do it. And they're away. That was unbelievable. Both of them were identical. They were identical to the millimeter. What are the chances of that? So now we're level pegging. But I haven't come all this way for another draw. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. As soon as I started stripping that fish, Tom. Oh, I love it here. That looks like a very good fish. It looks like a very good fish to me, Graham. <laughs> Man, 
What have we got on this fly? Dear me! Oof. Now all I'm worried about is a bloody shark. On, 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 fish again! Rain's in as well. What do you reckon it is, Graham? I think it's the king mackerel this time. Went off with a lot of speed. That's pretty classic of the king mackerel. Long, fast runs, and then not too much fight in between. Something rather large has just taken this fish. Oh, God damn it! God damn it! God damn it! Got it. That's the second time a pesky shark has got the better of me in Mozambique. Why is a shark not taking your fish and they're taking bloody mine? Let you hook yours first so I can create a little bit of a diversion. Don't lose him, Got A bit of a flash there. Look at the size of that. That is enormous. Oh. Got him, got him, got him, got him, got him. I was not expecting that. That is the biggest king mackerel I have ever seen. Look at this torpedo design. Hydrodynamically built for speed. And just check out the weaponry at the fore end. Have a look at that. I tell you what, Graham, you are looking at the marine equivalent of a Ferrari. <laughs> and you're also looking at the biggest fish of the day. Because the sharks eat bloody eating mine. They're not eating yours. What are you putting on your lure? Um, shark yeah. repellent. <laughs> shark repellent. So Graham's back in the lead. I might have to pull in a shark to win now. Got 30 minutes to go. Got time for one, possibly two more drifts. I am really up against it here. Good time of the day for King Mackerel. No pressure. It's a good time of the day for King Mackerel, just because he's caught one and I haven't. <laughs> Come on, Robbo. OK, we're on the money, Robson. Make this trip nice and quick. Thank God it's the final drift, because I don't think I can keep this going. Come on. Come on, yes, sir! Come on, come on, come on. He's off! Damn, 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 damn! Come on, follow it again, I know you're hungry. Yeah, he's back on, he's back on! Woohoo! He followed it and he's away! Oh, he's going like a steam train. <laughs> this could be bigger, I don't know what you're laughing at, funny lad. <laughs> Something very, very large on the end here. I want to get him in. Yeah. No pressure there, Robson. Could be the winning fish. I know it could, Graham. Come on, come on. Shark hasn't taken it yet. This fish is right up at the boat here. What do we got here? There we go. Yellow, oh. yellow spot for value. Oh. Lovely, lovely fish. Come on, Robson. OK, I bring the leader to me. Go on, don't lose him, Graham. I beg you. Oh, yes! How is that for my final fish of the day? That is a beautiful Trevelli. Yellow spot Trevelli, you can see the markings on the top here. Yeah. He's also got these big bag blotches running down here. And he's got a much more sort of rubbery mouth. That fish really punches above its weight. A formidable predator. What do you reckon weight-wise? I reckon about seven, eight kilos. Well, it's my biggest fish of the day, but it's not the biggest fish of the day. Damn! But what a beauty. Get in. Well done. Best angler one today. That's fly fishing, but not as I know it, I tell you. <laughs> that definitely is extreme. <laughs> Thanks very much. It's I've had a blast. blast. I've had an absolute blast. blast. It has been a blast, but unfortunately, Graham has blasted me out of the water. After two rounds of my Mozambican match-up, it's Robson nil, Mozambique one. Perhaps my next destination will bring more luck. This is Nayati Beach, perched on the tip of a 10-kilometre sand dune and home to a flock of flamingos and a few fishermen. This morning, I'm going to be taking one on. A fisherman, that is, not a flamingo. Morning, Helder. Helder, my translator. My opponent, Andre. Chikile vokile, Andre. How are you? How is it? Andre Mozzine full-time angler who fishes to feed his village. If he doesn't catch, people go hungry. Uh, Helder, could you ask Andre, has he any idea who I am? Has he heard of me? Andre, what's going on with the he goes on? No, that's not good. Oh, I think Steve is a Steve of mine. This is a challenge. So how does this sound for a competition? Let's keep it simple. The biggest fish of the day wins. OK, OK. OK? Yeah. Excellent. So the challenge is set. 
We're after any species we can tempt onto our lines direct from the beach. Biggest fish wins. Andre's using a traditional hand line, while I'm sticking to rod and reel to cast out beyond the breaking waves. You know, I could catch Trevelli, could catch King Mackerel, but what I really want to get hold of is the best fighting fish on the planet, the bonefish. There is no fight quite like it. But with a big swell and a strong current, getting our bait out to the fish is no easy task. Conditions are pretty rough today. It'll be a real challenge to catch a fish. See that line's moved with the current. Andre, any fish? The waves and the current are against us today. The fish are out there, they're not over here. It's, what's happening is the current's so strong, we're just casting out here at 90, and it's just bringing it to the horizontal. And the fish aren't here. Fish are out there. I've never known anything like it. We're having to chase our lures down the beach just to keep them in the water. But I think it's a losing battle. And just when you thought it couldn't get any worse, Look at this incoming weather system. Holy moly. Come on, I gotta catch a fish. The problem is, a few hundred kilometers of that way is a rather large cyclone. You come all this way to one of the most idyllic fishing locations on the planet, and the bloody weather puts some mockers on it. I like to ban the weather. Trying to control the elements, Robson. Yeah, that'll work. Fantastic! It's pouring down. Well, it doesn't take an Oxford Don to work out that we're not going to catch any fish today. Not in a million years. Ah, well, there's more to life than fishing. Apparently. Things to do in Mozambique when it's raining. Have a swim. Take a shower. Rehearse a few dance moves. Learn a new instrument. Enjoy a massage. All right, I know it stopped raining. I've been fishing all day. Cut me some slack, will you? Thanks, Linda, that's perfect. With the storm past and my back feeling fantastic, we can return to our competition. The fishing may be cancelled, but sometimes you don't have to cast a line to catch a creature of the sea. Now, I don't know if you know, but myself, Helda and Andre weren't entirely alone on the beach today. We were surrounded by literally thousands of ghost crabs. So, in the absence of any bonefish, the angler who catches a ghost crab in the fastest time is victorious. It's all we could think of. So, here we go. It's the first ever intercontinental crustacean crunch down. Think like a crab, Robson. Think like a crab. First to go, it's the young lad from Mozambique. Dinago. Dinbegi. Yemu. Fala. Dear me, he's gone like a rock. Go! Go! Is he related to Usain Bolt? Is he gone? <laughs> Got one out. <laughs> <laughs> but he got it! Good, good, good! Yeah, it, it was all right, it was good. good, it was all right. Now you see, it's carrying an injury. That's why you caught it, it's carrying an injury. So, 11 seconds to beat. I can do this. I caught crabs before. Three, two, one, go! And he's off! going for the classic pins of movement. Oh, and he's down. Not sure that's in the rules. But he's got it, he's got it. Textbook. Did I win? No? Well done, Andre. Oh, oh. It's been an honour, yeah. and it's, it's been a privilege. Problem. I might not have caught any fish, 
and barely caught a crab. But I've had a whale of a time here on the beach. The trouble is, the score now stands at Robson nil, Mozambique two. With two rounds to go, there's no room for error. So I'm leaving the ocean behind and heading inland. I'm on my way to the northwest of the country, to one of Africa's best kept fishing secrets, Lake Kahora Bassa. 170 kilometers long and in places 30 kilometers wide, the lake is home to all sorts of wonderful wildlife, including my target tonight, electric catfish. Oh, and my next opponent lives here as well. Stephen, Stephen Tenente, Robson Hello. Green. Hello. How are you? I'm fine, and you, sir? Yeah, very, very good. Stephen Tenente, he grew up on the shores of the lake and has been catching catfish since he was knee-high to a crocodile. Now tell me, you, have you caught an electric catfish before? Yes, I caught yeah? it. When you held it, did you get a shock? Yeah, it's good shock. Yeah, a big yes, shock? Yeah, the big shocks. Can they kill you? No. You promise me? Yes, I promise. Sir. OK. Yes. So if I die, ah. it's, it's your fault? <laughs> yeah, it's my fault. <laughs> it's, it's no problem. That's reassuring. So, round four, catfish. Electric catfish would be the star catch, but as there's other species here as well, the competition is simply biggest catfish wins, whatever the species. Do so you think you'll beat me? I think so. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Best of luck. OK. Yes. Let's do it. Catfish feed at night, so we're setting our lines just before it gets dark to be ready for when they become active. Now, the way the electric catfish predates is that it swims around giving out small, short bursts of electricity to try and stun its prey. And that's its method of electrical attack. Now, should something try and attack it, it will give out a rather large burst, up to 350 volts, to try and deflect said attacker or even kill it. 350 volts. That's enough to light a few Christmas trees. For now, though, all we can do is wait. Hey, Stephen, you know, while you're waiting for the fish to bite, do you sing songs? <laughs> nothing. No? Yeah, nothing. I, I can sing you a song. Huh? Yeah? And I think it's quite apt for this place. Yes. You ready? Yeah, ready. One, two, three, four, five. Once I caught a fish alive, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah. Then I let it go again. Why did I let it go? Because it gave me a 350 volt shock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what it's verified. You may have heard of us, yeah? Robson and Jerome? <laughs> nah, nah, nah. Three number ones I've had. Three. Three? Three number ones, are you? Well, we could have had four with this one. I love you so much. Can't go to the top. Never thought I'd say this, but stick to the fishing, Robson. All right, come on, Robson. In order to catch an electric fish, I need to find that extra spark. <laughs> yes! In! Oh, I've got a fish on here. Ooh, it's giving me the walkabout. What have we got here? something very, very small by the fight. Is that electric? Le le no, it's not electric. What is this? It's a squeaker. Oh, yes. This is a squeaker catfish, named for its unusual method of communication. It squeaks by rubbing its pectoral fins here against these grooves in its shoulders. Ed. Honestly, it is making the faintest of squeaking sounds, but you can't hear them for the bloody frogs. Actually, there's one over there sounds like a donkey. Have you heard it? <laughs> this fish is also known as the crocodile killer because if swallowed by a crocodile, it will lock out its rather sharp pectorals, lock up the dorsal, and would be a very, very unpleasant snack for a large reptile. It's a fascinating fish, but it's size that matters today, and that was a tiddler.
In the darkness, I can tell there's something much larger sniffing around my bait. Go on. One more like that, I could have the next fish here, Stephen. <laughs> Fish, fish? No! You lucky bugger! That's a bloody good fish. You are taking mine there. Whoa. It's a lot bigger than the squeaker. Is that a fondue? Yes! Stephen Tenente. <laughs> that is the biggest fish of yeah. this evening. There you have Heterobranchus longifilus, the fondue catfish. Longifilus referring to those long thread-like barbels that it uses to catch its prey with. And no other catfish in these waters has such a large second dorsal fin or adipose at the back end there. Look at the size of that. He's an absolute stunner. Well done. Thank you. Well done. Our time is up and I've lost yet another challenge. The overall scoreboard is starting to look rather bleak. It's now Robson nil, Mozambique three. And we never did catch an electric catfish. Well, not tonight anyway. Now, we don't normally do this in extreme fishing, but because it's such an extraordinary creature, here's one Stephen caught earlier. And I will now demonstrate the power of the electric catfish. I mean, I would like to, but because of insurance purposes, I can't, you see. Bit of a celeb, you know, irreplaceable. I just can't risk it. So, our sound man has kindly volunteered to take my place. Come here. Oh, go on then, you big Jesse, touch it. Go on, touch it, just touch it. All right? Yeah, a little bit, nothing much. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, well. With the score at 3 0, I can't win. But I can salvage some pride by taking victory in my final challenge. Lake Kahora Bassa is one of the best places in the world to catch the legendary tiger fish. It's a species I've battled before, and it took me two days just to catch one. That's not gonna cut it with my opponent today. Leonard Matthias. He's a professional skipper, can tempt a tiger fish onto his line where lesser men may fail, and laughs in the face of competition. Now, Leonard, you promise me there's a lot of tiger fish in here? Yes, I promise you. Yeah, last time I went fishing for them, it wasn't a pleasant experience, and I don't want to go through that hell again. No, this time it'll be okay, eh? Yeah? Sure. How's this for a competition? The angler who catches the most tiger fish is the winner. Okay. So the gauntlet has been laid down. With a lake full of tiger fish, all I have to do is catch more than Leonard. Simple. But as I know only too well, these ferocious predators are tricky little blighters. Yes! And it's out! It came out! I'm not gonna go through that again. Come on. The problem is, tiger fish have very hard mouths, so setting the hook takes a skillful angler. Got it. Got it. He's in, and that's biting away. Beauty. Beauty. How comes it stays on your hook and not mine, Leonard? <laughs> I think I'm the kingfisher, man. <laughs> well done, Leonard. <laughs> Thank you. Great catch. How's about that? Leonard's second cast, he gets a beautiful, small, tiger fish. The reason it gets its name tiger is because of its pugnacious behavior when it's caught, its voracious feeding habits, and this extraordinary coloration. Look at that vibrant orange and black on the leading edge. This is the iconic fish of Africa. One nil to you, Leonard. It's all to play for. So it's first strike to Leonard, but can I get an equalizer? God damn it! Not again. Look at that. Completely stripped it. How quick are these fish, man? You are feeding the fish here. You must catch it. 
These fish are winding me up something rotten, I tell you. Tiger fishing is a nightmare. <laughs> you in again? Yes. Leonard, how come you're netting them and I'm not? You need to work hard. I need to work harder? Yes. <laughs> well done. Thank you. A voracious predator. Sure. A voracious angler. What can I say? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like tiger fishing, Leonard. I've decided. I just keep losing the fish. It's very frustrating. Oh. I don't see chance here. <laughs> oh, he took at the boat. That fish just took that lure as it was coming in the boat. Oh, yes, sir. Ah, perhaps I do like it after all. Oh. After about 30 minutes of absolute angling hell, at last, my very own tiger. Aren't they just the healthiest and prettiest looking fish you've ever seen? <laughs> but don't let looks deceive. This bugger would remove your finger within the blink of an eye. But he's a beauty. How's about that, Leonard? Back in the game, who's laughing now? <laughs> oh, <laughs> Leonard is. Leonard's still laughing. <laughs> Frankly, I'm not surprised. For every three I lose... <laughs> oh, just concentrating. Oh, God. <laughs> Leonard simply reels one in. In. You're in again? Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> do <you> do that? <laughs> oh, God damn it. You missed again. What do you mean I missed again? I missed every bloody time. <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing for? I got hit! Bloody! I said! I'm in and what the fit! Again? Yes. Get it. You got him. He's yes. got him. You pleased you're beating me? Yes. Well done. I'm so pleased for you. Honest, I am. Thank you. If you believe that, you'll believe anything. It's just going to be one of those days where I realise I'm just <laughs> at catching tiger fish. <laughs> Over to you, Leonard. It's your show. <laughs> Come on, Robson. This lake is teeming with tiger fish. All you have to do is catch a few. Yes! I'm bloody in! Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Finally, I've hooked another one. But Leonard has other ideas. Leonard? Leonard, get your tackle off me line! See? I catch me fish, look what Leonard does. I mean, talk about a nasty trick. The fish is on the fish there. Is there. Yeah. Eh? The, the fish is there. Eh? You can pull by hand. Pull by hand this one. Oh! What? Why are you saying oh? Oh, there's the problem here. This fella's getting right on me. <laughs> Do you know what? I'm going to pull it in by hand. <laughs> Get it in the net there. Yeah, it's okay now. And it's f off. F hell. <sighs> I thought I took that rather well. Sorry, Leonard. <laughs> yeah. Right, focus, Robson. It's only 4 1. You can still win this. And I am in! Oh, Leonard, it's the comeback they all talked about. Get the net. Leonard, get the net. Don't lose it. Now then, if you hadn't have cocked up that last one, that would have been 4 3. <laughs> but unfortunately, it's 4 2. <laughs> Lucky you've got two. <laughs> <laughs> That'll show him. He may not look it, but inside, he's quaking. Fish here! I want fish! Just drop it! What? Just when I thought the comeback was on, you do that to me. Can I give you a kiss? You give me a kiss, come on, I dare you. Bro. Yeah, come on. Oh. 5 2. With just a few minutes to go, I simply have to catch the next fish. Now or never. Please. Please, I beg you. Everyone, the fish! Oh, man, they can leap. Well done, Leonard. Oh, 6 2, Mr. Robson. I know it's 6 2. This is a tiger, Robson, huh? Yeah? Yeah, I just to let you know, this is a tiger. <laughs> Just check it. It's a nice one. <laughs> Publicly humiliated on my own show. 
Well, it's not the first time. And let's face it, it probably won't be the last. You absolutely battered me. Sure. But you know what? I've loved every minute. My adventure in Mozambique has been a journey into the African unknown. I discovered awesome ocean angling. That there is an extreme fish. Fearsome fly fishing. A formidable predator. And cracking crab catching. <laughs> but despite a promising start, Mozambique has definitely had the last laugh. This is a tiger, up to now. <laughs> Quite frankly, I've had a shocker. The final score is Mozambique 4, Robson Green 0. 4 nil. A total and utter whitewash. But you know what? Sometimes it's not about winning or losing. It's sometimes about taking part. And I'm only saying that because I lost. But don't worry. I'll live to fight another day. You watch. 4 nil. <laughs>